I think for a North Georgia cracker of my size and age, I've had to work pretty good education on that line. That do all right? I was a three-year-old girl when the Indians were moved from this country to Indian Territory. I have an indistinct recollection of seeing the red men as they went through the woods, for everything was woods nearly at that time. I have a, a distinct impression if a three-year-old child can have it. Nevertheless, I've been here since that time. Peruvians, Haitians, Ecuadorians, Nicaraguans, Colombians, Salvadorians. By the time the first African slaves arrived in Lima, Peru just two decades into the 16th century, the oppressive drowning of European whitewashing had already rid them of their African identity. Fast forward to the 19th century and Lima was the epicenter of Peru's slave labor industry, known as the City of Kings. And by the time slave owner Rebecca Ann did that interview in 1929, Immortal Technique's grandfather may have been one of those red men Rebecca saw in the bushes as a child. Half a century later, Immortal Technique was born in Lima, Peru dead smack in the middle of Peru's civil war of the 80s, his DNA is mostly indigenous to the Americas, but the way imperialism works, he also has Spanish, French, and you guessed it, African ancestry. In the words of Curtis James Jackson III, I ain't gonna spell it out for you motherfuckers all the time, are you a literate nigga? You can't read between the lines. Look, imperialism is a motherfucker, but a byproduct of it both directly and indirectly is a revolutionary mind who would evoke 400 years of trauma through an art form that came about out of pure desperation. It's not gangster rap, and sure you could call it conscious rap because he's well aware of the bars he raps, but with Immortal Technique, that glove doesn't quite fit. Although the tree grows for me, now let's get back to this rap. Immortal Technique represents revolutionary rap in its purest form, not just in a political sense, but in how he transformed the way his music reached the people. After narrowly escaping civil war in his homeland and arriving in Harlem, New York in the 80s, Tech faced another obstacle rooted in the same subjection. A crack epidemic was just the beginning, and parts of Harlem resembled a scene from a zombie apocalypse movie. In essence, Tech was fleeing the after effects of colonialism, only to encounter another manifestation of it in the United States of America. While incarcerated for a year, a mortal technique would take to rapping and hone his skills to pass the time. By the time Tech was free, he was battling every motherfucker in sight, like fellow Harlem spitter Smoke Dizza and that one dude from 106 and Park. Let's roll the clip. Yo, don't try to be tough. Wait, did Immortal Technique just prophesize the demise of the Diddler? Tech would take his winnings from battles and invest it in the production of his first album, Revolutionary Volume 1. Three days after the Twin Towers dropped on September 14th, 2001, Tech started selling his first album straight out the trunk of his car. Look, Tech was independent before it was cool to be independent. The album is filled with references to Elijah Muhammad, contains clips of Malcolm X speeches, in a lot of ways, the project is a reflection of Malcolm X and the ideologies of the Black Panthers. You call it radical, Immortal Technique calls it long overdue. Let's roll the clip. My enemy is not the average white man. It's not the kid down the block or the kids I see on the street. My enemy is the white man I don't see. Immortal Technique acknowledges the whitewashing of the Americas in Africa, stripped the fabric of indigenous and African cultures to shreds. Like for real, where the fuck are all the indigenous people of the United States of America? You wanna know? One word, genocide. But no worries, the colonizers had plenty of replacements. Let's roll the clip. You take you take a, a, a West African man who's sitting there tending his, his 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 goat or whatever, and here jumps off a boat a man clad in armor, a religious fanatic covered in lice, you know what I mean, <laughs> waving an art booster, throws a chain around his neck, enslaves his women and children, uh, throws them in the bottom of a boat, steals them, takes them to another country, forces them to build a house called the White House of all fucking things. You can imagine the irony of that. The truth of the matter is, the construction of the White House in 1792 included slave labor. It wasn't until October 17, 1901, however, when President Theodore Roosevelt changed the title of the President's House from Executive Mansion to White House. Has nobody challenged changing the name? We just gonna let that one slide, Barack Obama? Makes you wonder. But let's address the elephant in the room, or should I say devil in the room. There's a track on Revolutionary Volume 1 that stands out as one of the most violent and unthinkable hip-hop records of all time. Dance with the Devil. I first heard of Immortal Technique when I was around 12 or 13 years old. My older cousin had some new music he insisted I check out. I vividly remember him rummaging through a pile of cannabis and hip-hop magazines on his desk, searching for a baby blue burn CD. Biggie Smalls was playing in the background. 
When my older cousin finally put the CD into the player, the somber piano keys immediately caught my attention. That's when Technique introduced us to William, a lost soul consumed by the streets, desperate for acceptance. In essence, Dance with the Devil is a modern Shakespearean tragedy, reminiscent of King Lear's tale, a man who abandoned the love of one child, only to be betrayed by his other children, who deceived him with flattery. In Dance with the Devil, William seeks the love from the streets, not knowing that the streets show no love. Without giving away the story to those of you who haven't heard Dance with the Devil, it is one of the most jaw-dropping hip-hop narratives ever performed by an MC. And what is essentially a case of art imitating life, Immortal Technique has stated that the story of Dance with the Devil is indeed true. Let's roll the clip. I can take people, if they really want, to the building where this incident happened in Harlem. Mm. And the truth is that that actually did happen and those people that were allegedly responsible for that began dying. And that's why it became such a powerful story because everyone's like, oh, you're telling hood tales. What if these motherfuckers come back for you? And I said, let them. Right. What are they going to do? Like, you think that the neighborhood is going to protect them after they find out what they really did, that they raped a woman? Do you realize that in rich communities, you can get away with stuff like that? You're like, oh, there are little kids coming in all hours of the night. No one says anything. Right. They're all billionaires. But if you live in a ghetto and someone says a rumor in the hood, oh, someone's touching kids in apartments. Yeah, they get, they're getting fucked bro, up. Everybody from the neighborhood. Yo, yo, yo. Que pasa, the, what down, the, yeah. the fuck is going on in your homes? So that's the kind of energy it was. And these people literally started dying. And one of them, I, 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 we're not going to mention names because these people don't deserve to be remembered in a good light. But this is a sad story. They couldn't find this man, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And I, what I explain to people about the street is that there's no there's no rules. Just like there's no such thing as a safe gun. You have to respect everything. I'm a big Second Amendment guy, but you idea. have to respect the weapon. There's no such thing as a safe gun. These people were out here thinking that they could get away with a crime and that they wouldn't be found. And they murdered this man's son mm. to get him to come to the funeral so they could kill him. Jeez. This is the type of shit that people were dealing with. That's one of your... The impression that Dance with the Devil had on a 12-year-old me stays with me to this day. When listening to the song now, I see it more than just a tale of the unthinkable. It's a story of a lost soul tempted by everyday evils, yearning for love and acceptance from the streets that show no real love. Revolutionary Volume 1 would go on to define a dark period in American history where trust in the government was severely lacking. It was a time when documentaries like Endgame, Loose Change, and Fahrenheit 9-11 exposed the government's funding of terrorism. The album would ultimately get Tech signed to indie label Viper Records and even landed him on the Source Magazine's hip hop quotable section. Not bad for a dude selling his album out the trunk. But whereas Revolutionary Volume 1 was more a display of lyrical exercise, Revolutionary Volume 2 released in 2003 is a showcase of revolutionary ideas and retrospective critiques on Europe's ethnic cleansing in the Americas. For instance, on Point of No Return, Tech speaks on the Taino people, who are indigenous people of the Caribbean enslaved soon after they say Christopher Columbus arrived on their shores. Approximately 7 million Taino people were killed in the short four decades of enslavement. Let's roll the clip. Just like the Spanish exterminating Tainos, raping the black and Indian women, creating Latinos. Motherfuckers made me out of self-righteous hatred. What I noticed with Revolutionary Volume 2 is the subject of European imperialism is more predominant and brash. Look, the truth is often bitter, and in this context, bloody. And how could this be? The land of the free, home of the brave, indigenous holocaust, and the home of the slaves. Immortal Technique furthers the idea of imperialism in other mediums in an interview with Get Gone TV. Let's roll the clip. The westernizing and the whitewashing of science and math. Okay. You know? For example, we, we, we think of science and math, we can't name one person from the Middle East or one person from China or one person from Africa, but then they tell us Sir Isaac Newton. We all know who that is, right? Yeah, we do. Oh my God. Yeah, we, we talk about politics. Machiavelli, oh shit. That's not just Tupac. That, but at the same time, we've lost Imhotep. You know what I mean? Father of medicine. So we talk about science, medicine. The, the, the person who taught uh, a lot of the early Greek philosophers, and they learned at the feet of. And I think that when we examine these particular aspects of our society without reclaiming that, and again, it's not to put down anybody else's civilization. We're not sitting here aggrandizing ourselves by looking down upon what Europeans have done to the world. The only philosophical question we have for them is, 
has your technology made you a better human being? Before it was mainstream to speak on the Illuminati, secret societies, and the bullshit war started in America, Mortal Technique was ahead of the curve. On Cause of Death, off of Revolutionary Volume 2, Tech would prophesize what Edward Snowden and Julian Assange would eventually prove. Let's roll the clip. You think Illuminati is just a fucking conspiracy theory? That's why conservative racists are all running shit, and your phone is tapped by the federal government. A few moments later. How good are the Americans? What can the NSA do with this device if they wanted to get into my life? So first off, that's probably the, uh, the most expensive burner I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> But I guess we're at the uh, we're at the upmarket. I'm using uh, a term upmarket of drug dealer yeah. here. Uh, this is the turned NSA, off. It's inert. Right. The 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 NSA, the Russian intelligence service, the Chinese intelligence service, any intelligence service in the world that has significant funding and a real technological research team can own that phone the minute it connects to their network. As soon as you turn it on. It can be theirs. The final piece of the trilogy would be Immortal Technique's final official album, The Third World, released in 2008. This is Immortal Technique's most refined work featuring the legendary DJ Green Lantern, and from start to finish, Immortal Technique educates listeners on the grim truth of America's foundation and what it was really built on. The first two bars on the album set the tone for the rest of the project. Let's roll the clip. Invasion and rape of monetary inflation that brought us all to the footsteps of this nation. Mortal Tech is calling it how he sees it. If it's two things America loves, it's being another country's business and printing a whole lot of money. And we can't forget about America's good old privatized portion of the prison system. Let's roll the clip. Prisons are more overcrowded than the rap game. They say you're more likely to go to jail with a black name. With Immortal Technique, it's not so much about the lyrical wit or brilliant production that makes him stand out, but rather his brash delivery of censored ideas that peel back the layers of systematic racism, imperialism, and the ruling class. People often scratch their head in bewilderment as Immortal Technique's catalog essentially stops at the Third World album released 15 years ago. Other than a compilation album of unreleased material, Immortal Technique essentially vanished from the rap world. What Immortal Technique did next with his life is nothing short of remarkable. He took the proceeds he made from his last album, The Third World, and teamed up with a non-profit human rights organization to build an orphanage in Kabul, Afghanistan, called the Green Light Project. There was zero funding from corporate or external entities. These days, Immortal Technique speaks to imprisoned youth, works with activists, and raises money for children hospitals overseas. If it's one thing about Technique, he puts his money where his mouth is. He used hip-hop to not only rage against European imperialists and what America has become, but used it as a source to uplift the oppressed. Immortal Technique in a lot of ways set precedence for MCs of today, selling his first album out the trunk and not giving a penny to major label corporations. Furthermore, he took those profits and made tangible change without the need for corporate sponsors or fake award show gatherings. He's hip-hop in its rawest form, a descendant of Public Enemy and Tupac, if you will, who gave the world pieces of art that exposed what was supposed to be erased from history. And for that, I am forever grateful. I go by the name of Nugs, and this is that dope shit.